Good morning guys, welcome back to our road trip across Northern England. Right now we are in Kingston upon Hull. Hull was recently named the UK City of Culture for 2017, so we're here to find out a bit more about its contribution to English heritage. Let's roll. Well guys, we've managed to score another day of really good weather here, which is always a surprise in this corner of the world. But uh, it should be mentioned that Hull is undergoing lots of reconstruction. They're basically just pimping it out for uh, 2017. So where are we off to first, bro? So one of the biggest contributions Hull had to English heritage was in the maritime field. This was a major port from medieval times all the way through the modern era. So we're gonna head to the Maritime Museum right now and meet with a local expert who's gonna teach us a bit more about its role. Let's go. I think it's anchors away. So Hull was founded in the 1100s as a trading port and throughout the Middle Ages became part of the Hanseatic League, which was basically like the precursor of the European Union, like this, this sort of network of trading ports around Northern Europe, which connected England and the British Isles all the way with Germany and the Baltic States and Scandinavia. The reason we're here is to look at Hull's maritime history. Hull was built, literally, to export wool. And that's what it did first of all. Not only exported wool, but it also exported lead. And the merchants got quite rich on them. The sea was the first World Wide Web. And Hull people and ships you know, did their business in, in great waters. Scratch any story of the sea from across the world and you'll find Hull people and ships. Well, that was super interesting. I think one of the most fascinating parts of travel is by connecting the dots from different places and peoples. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the last year, we've been to cities in the Hanseatic League, like Tall in Estonia, and you can see those connections here, and like the architecture and some of the street names. It's crazy how commercial ventures can connect a city like this to the rest of the world. You know, England is such a maritime nation, and cities like Hull are the ones that you know kind of sent the British out into the world. It's pretty interesting. Something quirky about Hull, it's the only place in the UK that has white telephone booths. Alright, so now we're down at the waterfront. Um, we're standing in front of the Arctic Corsair, which is an, a fishing trawler that used to fish way up in the North Atlantic. We're meeting up with Derek and Wally, who are two guys who worked as fishermen for a long time. According to Wally here, over 900 trawlers left Hull and never returned, yeah. and over 6,000 of these Fishy. fishermen were lost at sea, including including your father, your yeah. uncle, uncle, two uncles, and father. You see these lists back here of all these names, and then the plaques in the other wall of all the faces of the people who died at sea here in Hull, and it's crazy. It really puts into perspective how important this industry was and how many people died fishing here in Hull because you know they're, they're motoring all the way up to Iceland. Definitely a dangerous job and not one for the faint of heart. Pretty insane guys, to put this into perspective, these guys would go out fishing for like two to three weeks and in that time they would fill this hold with literally like four or five tons of fish. That's like anywhere between 10 and 20,000 fish. They would be up to their chests in live fish and they would have to gut all of those fish on the deck before they could go into this machine back here. Basically it was like a conveyor belt and it would dump the fish down into the hold. And then there would be other guys here who would be shoveling ice onto the fish to keep them fresh. Down here. Down here. That's just danger. Keep out. Is that because of the smell from all you guys sleeping down there? No, the anchor's down here. <laughs> That's the anchor down there, huh? Yeah. But normally you would have slept down there. Yeah, there's two bunks at that side. And there'd be two bunks at this side. It's where you slept. It's Dead Man's Corner. There's nowhere to hide. So when that sea pounded over, if you was caught there, that'd smash you right up to that bulkhead and kill you. 
story of cod fishing is just a fascinating one. At one point they thought that there were so many codfish you could walk clear from Europe to North America on the backs of codfish. It was so lucrative that they called the fishing spots silver pits, but eventually cod was overfished. That was made even worse in the 1970s with uh, what was called the Cod Wars. Iceland asserting its territorial control over its waters and not letting English fishing trawlers fish off their coasts where they did for hundreds of years. And that combined with the mechanization of the cargo port really led to uh, bad times for the city. And it's been basically trying to recover ever since that double blow in the mid-1970s. Man, those guys have some stories, huh? Fishermen and their tails. For sure, but maybe the most long-lasting story of English fishermen is the dish that we most commonly associate with the UK, fish and chips. So we're gonna head into the Lion and Key, one of the oldest pubs in town here, have a pint, have some lunch, and then start an ale trail. Cheers. Yum, thank you. All right, so one pub down, the next one is Yield Heart, uh, which has a pretty interesting story because it is the pub that sparked, in many ways, the English Civil War back in the 1600s. You gotta love when you walk into a pub and there's just a human skull on display. No big deal. Chill. So now we are in the plotting parlor, which is named like this because this used to be the governor's house and a couple of citizens at the outbreak of the English Civil War decided to deny the king, Charles I, entry into the city. And you know what happens when you deny the king. You get sieged bad things happen. Yeah, so there was a siege that happened uh, after that, and that was pretty much the first uh, kind of conflict of the English Civil War, and it eventually... And it pretty poorly for Charles, right? Yeah, lost his head. What do you think we should plot in this room, bro? I think we should plot to have more pints. I think we should plot the same thing we plot every day. How, How to, to take, take over, over the world! world. <laughs> I know the last video was about haunted places, but... Yeah, I feel it here. <laughs> what is that? Where? Oh my god. There's just an <laughs> arm in here. Limbs everywhere and then there's Oh this my god, that scared the hell out of me. I know, right? Thank you. So you might notice that uh, ye old white heart, heart is actually a deer, not like the heart in your chest. And uh, we just learned that that's because King Richard II mandated that all pubs have some sort of sign. I just generally love the way that uh, pubs are named in the UK. Now please don't take this the wrong way, but there are so many names of pubs that are really sexual, but also not. And I don't know if this is like a running joke, but I don't get it. Because the word cock means a hen, we would just say hen. No, a cock means a rooster. Well, yeah, okay. Either way, it's not perverted, it's just Old English. So this is the most narrow and smallest window in all of England. It was designed to allow the porter to be able to see when coaches were coming so he could give them good service. And that's the George Pub here at home. Right guys, well, kind of an interesting turn of events this afternoon. We are being interviewed by ITV and we're in front of the Hall Theater, which is kind of a landmark in the city. You know, it's a big year for Hall. There's a lot of people here who are excited about becoming City of Culture and uh, I think they're interested to see what we think, which so far has been pretty All fun. All positive, yeah. Anyways, we're going to head back inside because we have to do a quick interview with the theater director. Mark Babich. I am the artistic director of Hull Truck Theatre. It started in the early 1970s by a director called Mike Bradwell who was with a bunch of quite revolutionary theatre makers and they decided to create a theatre company in probably the least likely place in the early 1970s and that was Hull. 
and they literally started from um, making work out the back of a truck. So hence the name Hull Truck. It's been quite the day, man. I've had a great time here in Hull. We've explored part of the city, now we're going to the marina. We're going to this restaurant, 1884, which has played a part of kind of giving some energy to this part of the city. Hull was really badly damaged in World War II, so not only did you have the fishing industry leave, the port kind of shut down, but in World War II, 90 to 95% of the city was destroyed in the whole Blitz, which was basically a German bombing campaign. Restaurants like 1884 have started putting in a lot of energy in this part of the city, so we're gonna go meet up with Laura Waller, the chef, and uh, have some din-dins. It started off as a, an attempt to bring kind of the Manhattan style steakhouse to the UK and also to put something in, in an area that previously had been quite uh, neglected for, for a number of years. It's all very beautifully presented. We have Venice and Wellington, some sea bream and sole, all local produce, all delicious. I momentarily forgot that I'm eating pure bacon and lard. It's super nice. <laughs> Mark said that eating bacon makes your beard better. What bacon does is it, it puts the oil in your beard that you need to make it all thick. It also puts the oil in your heart that makes you have a heart attack. But trade-offs, man. Beards are worth it, right? Until you have a heart attack. Until <laughs> you have a heart attack. Well, I had an absolutely amazing day here in Hull. It was super fun. Yeah, we definitely did. You know, uh, it's been a great little addition to our road trip here in Northern England, so if you've not seen the rest of the videos, make sure you check out the rest of this playlist. Uh, there's links in the description box. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Vaga Brothers for new travel videos every Tuesday. In the meantime, remember to stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Next stop, Liverpool. Peace. I mean, Leeds. We're going to Leeds, actually. <laughs>